Good evening. We're going to start with a quote, as we always do. Afoot and lighthearted, I take to the open road, healthy, free, the world before me, the long brown path before me, leading me wherever I choose. Henceforth, I ask not good fortune. I myself am good fortune. Henceforth, I whimper no more. I postpone no more. I need nothing. That's from Walt Whitman, uh, Songs for the Open Road, Poems of Travel and Adventure. Poems of Travel and Adventure. This is Premier Wellness travel. So welcome to our meditation sessions where I offer space and support and breath to create connection and um, up our vibrations. I'm Cassandra Marcella Metzger. I'm a certified yoga therapist and the founder of Premier Wellness Travel. And I'm here to guide you in the discovery of this very effective practice during this unusual time. Each weekday at six, I'll be here to guide you and to inspire you to create possibility for groundedness, routine, kindness, and compassion. And this is Goddess Week. Yesterday we talked about Durga. Today we're going to talk about Lakshmi. So Lakshmi is the goddess of abundance, and not just of prosperity, but also inner abundance, the inner, inner and outer abundance, so the material and the spiritual. She also brings what we need for a good name and a good reputation. For her, a good reputation comes from um, good skill, our own kindness and our own sense of justice that we ourselves are fair and her power comes from play fun and delight so we have the most abundance in our lives when we cultivate play fun and delight and by the way one of her other names is Camilla sort of interesting which literally means lotus and the lotus represents life growth beauty and blossoming like Lakshmi does so I thought that was kind of cool I just wanted to share since um, we have a senator from California named Kamala. So her story is pretty interesting, and it's this. There's the king of the gods, his name is Indra, and he's arrogant like kings are. And one day he passes this wise sage called Durvasana. Sorry, Durvasa. And he gives him a beautiful garland of flowers. Now Indra gives him just a perfunctory thank you. He's a king, so he this like garland flowers doesn't really mean anything to him. And as soon as he can, as soon as he's out of sight, he puts the garland around the head of a passing elephant. So he wasn't very appreciative. Well, that turned out to be a mistake, a big mistake, because it was a divine gift. So now Indra gets cursed by Devasas because the garland itself was Lakshmi, which means that he tossed away abundance, auspiciousness, goodness and all of that disappears from the world now when she's unhappy this goddess she or she feels disrespected she just disappears she doesn't fight or roar like some of the other goddesses like Durga yesterday or Kali would tomorrow Kali's coming up tomorrow she just disappears she goes away and so goes with her all of her gifts to the world and that includes beauty fertility crops charity good moods and even good expression. So now there are all these needless quarrels going on in the world. Even the sun and the moon was said to be shadowed and dimmed. So to coax her back, Vishnu had to do something kind of special. She had disappeared into the ocean, which in the myth represented the sea of consciousness, the sea of love and intelligence beyond time and space. So it was kind of hard to find her. So what did he do? He got all the good guys, the good gods and goddesses on one side of the ocean and all the demons on the other. And then they began to stir up the ocean. He actually himself turns himself into a tortoise, into a serpent, and dives into the bottom of the sea so that he can churn it from below. And as the waves rise higher and higher, Lakshmi emerges out of, right out of the sea. And her skin is a milky golden white. She wears a garden garland around her neck and is robed in a pink silk sari and she's very beautiful and they go on and on about her breasts too they're they're full and they're perky and they're high and round and they represent a source of creation of life and of abundant giving so let's actually do a visualization to conjure her 
I want you to take a comfortable seat and close your eyes. And as you listen to my description, I want you to um, sort of slow down your breath, elongate it as you can, and as you relax into this place that I'm going to describe. We're going to travel to the most beautiful garden in the world. Close your eyes and just breathe in. You're actually sitting on a sprawling and luscious lawn and you can smell the freshly cut grass. And the edge of the lawn is bordered with the most beautiful flowers. And you notice the sweetness of the lilies and the alluring essence of jasmine. And the roses are full and in fragile bloom too. Now you are sitting in the shade of a beautiful flowering tree and the wind occasionally rises and you get a whiff of the sweetness of the blossoms and the blooms on this tree which has branches covered with the most delicate gorgeous flowers. There's even a small pond that you can hear and it's filled with water lilies and lotus flowers and goldfish, gold fish, and a water fountain that trickles over the rocks. It gurgles and giggles, tickling the rocks and caressing your ears. Then you notice down at the other end of the lawn that the land slopes down into the sea. And the sunlight sparkles like diamonds on the surface of the small waves. The ocean itself seems to glimmer with golden light. Slowly, Lakshmi rises out of the water and her form is a lovely sight to see. She's slender and she arises tall and thin out of the sea. Her skin is again white and shimmers like gold. Her hair is long and thick and she wears a rosy pink sari. As she begins to move towards you and you wait, she moves from the ocean where she emerged to where you're sitting on the lawn and it doesn't take long. And she sits and reclines on a stool you hadn't noticed before, right near you. And she gazes at you with love, with so much love and generosity. She sees right into your heart and loves you unconditionally with abundant love. She sees your soul and she smiles. And you realize her gaze is surrounding you with golden light all around you. This light is her blessing. And as you breathe in, you breathe in her gifts of love, beauty, gratitude, forgiveness, healing, bliss, prosperity, good fortune, and good repute. And you feel all these wonderful abundant things wash over you until you are held and supported by her golden wave of waves of light. And you can just relax and trust that she will bring you all that you need. So again, I just want you, we're going to invoke her nine times. I want you to continue to breathe. And with each in breath, I want you to listen to me reciting a mantra. And then when you breathe out, I want you to relax a little more and just lean into her gifts. And we're going to do these one at a time, nine times. <laughs> so again, keeping your eyes closed. Breathing in, I honor the auspicious goddess of prosperity. Breathing in, I honor the auspicious goddess of love. I honor the auspicious goddess of recognition and being seen. I honor the auspicious goddess of good expression and being heard. I honor the auspicious goddess of ambition realized. I 
I honor the auspicious goddess of creativity. I honor the auspicious goddess of beauty. I honor the auspicious goddess of fun and delight. And I honor the auspicious goddess of well being. Go ahead and open your eyes. I'm going to show you a photo of her so you can see her. This time I have it marked. So you can see the garland around her. Yeah, and those are coins coming out of her hand. The goddess of abundance and prosperity. So um, today I'm coming to you from my living room, slightly different setup. I'm not usually able to sit here because the sunlight is usually beaming in, but it's a little bit of a cloudy day. But this is the view from my window, you can see. I live right in downtown DC, which I love. And um, yeah, thank you for watching tonight. And I will be back here tomorrow. We're gonna to talk about the goddess Kali, it's the goddess of revolution. Um, but for today, just focus on the abundance. Um, and remember Walt Whitman's words, I'm gonna read them again to you. Henceforth, I ask not for good fortune. I myself am good fortune. That actually goes in along with the myth of Lakshmi where you sometimes will invoke her in order to embody her so that you are the good fortune, you are the abundance, you are the prosperity. So I love mixing East and West. Um, I need to show those connections. Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Namaste.